Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Data Art Conversations with Sports Betting Leaders. Today, we are joined by Eric Frank, CEO and co-founder of Odds on Compliance. And as always, Kevin Twitchell, advisor at Data Art. Eric, thank you once again for joining us today. Uh, uh, let's start off with kind of some of your, your background. Um, you know, please tell us about yourself uh, and your organization. And most importantly, how did you get to where you are today? Yeah, no, uh, thanks, uh, Russell, for having me and Kevin as well. Appreciate the opportunity to, to speak. Um, yeah, and no, I, um, so I practiced law for about eight uh, plus years exclusively in the gaming industry, uh, then went in house to uh, Poker Stars, the largest online uh, poker platform globally. Um, was there as their US regulatory counsel and then uh, grew into a larger role as their global compliance officer, kind of overseeing uh, compliance and regulatory affairs um internationally and, and across the u.s um uh, decided uh you know as the u.s was was uh you know really taken off here in terms of sports betting saw a real opportunity uh in the space um you know limited number of compliance professionals uh u.s based and and, and saw an opportunity to kind of grow an organization that can help Companies large, medium, and small uh, handle all types of different regulatory and compliance issues. So, started odds on beginning of 2021. Um, you know, really with two two arms of the business. One was um, a consulting business to help folks understand and, and deal with regulatory and compliance matters. Um, and another another piece was to build technology to make compliance and, regula uh, and regulatory affairs um, more efficient and easier to deal with as more states come on board, more complexities um, continue to happen. I uh, really wanted to roll my sleeves up and build some tools uh, that could that could really help folks uh, deal with those on a on an ongoing basis and, and, and help them deal with that more efficiently so they're not just hiring uh, more and more folks, but excuse <laughs> me, dealing with things in, the, in a much more efficient manner. So uh, that's odds on. Started again, um, just as myself and my co-founder, part-time co-founder, now full-time, but uh, um, who's the, the the tech side of the business, Mark Scrivo, um, really just kind of building out on, on a napkin some of the things we wanted to accomplish from the tech side. And then um, took it from there and, and here we are uh, about a year and a half later, um, just onboarding our 18th employee. Um, you know, we've we've launched um, a, a successful uh, te tech platform that, to really uh, help folks um, with one aspect of regulatory compliance, and we have a a, a, a growing consulting business of uh, former regulators, uh, heads of compliance of various uh, operators. Former independent testing lab professionals, um, you know, helping helping folks large and small deal with issues across the industry. Yeah, yeah. So the, you know, for us, this is a very interesting topic because uh, you know, in the, in the sports betting industry, especially from the end user perspective, nobody ever even you know thinks about this or knows about something like this. So it's really interesting to get under the hood here. Um, <clears throat> uh, tell us. Uh, you know why compliance is like so key to um, uh, active uh, operators uh, sure. and operators uh, who want to come online, and also new states that are coming online here. Yeah. You know, pretty much on a monthly basis. Yeah, no, I think uh, th that's why compliance is so key because there's such a uh, such a rapid pace at which new regulation is growing, and 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 wanting to be at the forefront as a business. Uh, in each of those states, um, getting getting you know launched in that market takes a you know takes a takes an army, uh, and it's to and it's to meet uh, the regulatory requirements from licensing to product, uh, you know, to your internal controls and documentation and everything that um, you know goes on behind the scenes. Even things as small as uh, or in, in, as the terms and conditions that players sign up to. And click when they create an account, or how they create an account, and 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 the and the user journey of of account creation. Like each of those 
pieces that that you know that, that players may take for granted as they you know, as they sign up is um, you know is subject to regulation and has to follow some processes and and you know that differs from New Jersey to uh, Pennsylvania to Michigan to Indiana. Uh, so mm-hmm. managing you know the requirements mm-hmm. across all those different states if you're um, a multi-state operator um, or want to be a multi-state operator, um, you know, understanding the, uh, you know, the regulatory hurdles that you're going to face moving forward, building that into your business plan and um, projections and all that, like compliance touches, touches everything. So, uh, you know, as your hiring plan, as you hire new people, you know, are they going to have to be licensed? Uh, how does that fit in? Do they need to be licensed in advance of being hired or do they get, you know, do they have to get licensed after they've been hired? So, it, you know, it really compliance is touching each aspect of the business and, and, um, you know, and, it, and it's, you know, ever evolving, uh, you know, states are doing a good job of, of, um, you know, building regulations, looking at what other states are, are, are doing and, and improving their regulations. But that means more changes coming on board. Um, you know, we saw, um, some states, you know, ch- change their, their position on, on, uh, taxable bonuses or, or whether bonuses can be, uh, um, you know, um, defer from taxes. And, and so like keeping up with all that kind of information, that's, that hits your finance department, that hits your tax department. Um, you know, so, so it's, it's critical. It touches each, each part of the business. Yeah. And, you know, just kind of based on recent events. So <clears throat> Massachusetts, um, they're, you know, one step away from mm-hmm. legalizing sports betting. And, and what's interesting, like some articles that I, uh, read about the process, you have some politicians saying, yeah, we'll be ready, uh, you know, by football season. And then the gaming commission kind of pumping the brakes on that saying, nah, we may be in the early 2023. Um, so I mean, it just goes to show you, I think how, critical this is right Mm -hmm. because uh you know even though you know they've been working on this legislation for years they still don't understand all of the work that that goes into you know actually getting it up and having like all the understanding all the regulations that that specific state will set Mm -hmm. and then you know a company like yours coming in and and really making sure that they adhere you know from a compliance perspective yeah, I get. I think going to the conferences we've gone to this year, you know, going to SBC and all these conferences, I think every panel, whether it's marketing, everybody talks about regulations and frustrations mm-hmm. and state by state. And it just seems no matter what any panel discussion sometimes gets into this, this conversation. So when you look at your platform, the, the playbook platform, mm-hmm. you know, is that what are the pain points that that really solves in those type of conversations for your customers, your, your people that you were attracting to be your customers? Yeah. So that, that, that hits, uh, you know, the step one of, of what we want to, a pain point we want to solve. And that's, uh, you know, navigating through 30 different websites of 30 different regulators right. and, you know, 35 soon and then 40, uh, you, you go into Canada and you go into Latin America, you get up to 50, 100 different, um, Jeez. websites that you're, that you're navigating to make sure you're staying up to date on all the uh, latest regulations. Uh, you go to, you know, um, a regulator's website, you, you download the latest version of regulations. Uh, you download them into a PDF. They sit on your computer. Um, you, you read through them. You get busy with other stuff. You come back in a month. Now you're not sure whether you have the latest version. You go back to that regulator's website. You navigate through it, trying to find those regulations again. Um, we, you know, that's a, a time suck for folks. And what we, what we really wanted to solve primarily step one was, uh, to create a, a one stop shop where people can go, uh, see all the states, regulations, statutes, advisory opinions, technical bulletins. Uh, informal guidance, formal guidance, and everything that regulators put out, um, publicly, we've, we, we've brought in into one place. We make every state, uh, every jurisdiction look exactly the same. So you don't have to be navigating, remember where stuff is. It's all in the same place. Um, mm-hmm. across states, you can, uh, take notes there, uh, write in the documents, um, you know, stay up to date, collaborate with your teammates, write in those documents. 
that we're you no longer have to be making sure they're up to date. We're doing that in the back end, making sure we always have the latest version, um, checking daily for updates, notifying you if there are updates to to documents that you're tracking or monitoring. Um, so that was you know step one in what playbook um, was going to solve. And I keep saying step one because we have uh, you know a lot more on the roadmap based off client needs, client demands. There's a, a lot more exciting stuff we we plan to build. What about on a on a global level? Like, is this, you know, where we have been so U.S. centric right mm-hmm. now, but, you know, at SBC, there was a whole talk about Canada mm-hmm. and you just mentioned it. Is this U.S. centric platform or you have a global vision? How does how does that roll out? So we are going to be rolling out, uh, hoping to roll out Canada in the, in the very near future and, and do have plans to work um, on rolling out throughout throughout Europe. And then tracking oh, Latin great. America as, as um, you know, it starts to re- regulate and, um, you know, see Brazil, Argentina, uh, Argentina, similar concept. You have the province of Buenos Aires regulating, you have the city of Buenos Aires regulating. So it's, uh, you know, wow. it's, it's uh, uh, pretty interesting. But, you know, again, how people manage and understand uh, you know, the differences and, and try and operate in both. Um, and understand, you know, what's the same and what's different and, and, and keeping up to date on that. Yeah. And, and, you know, the way you described the user experience with your platform sounds, you know, fairly intuitive. Um, but if we look at it from a, a tech perspective, I, I mean, at least from my experience, there's a lot going on under the hood, sure. right? Not only to, uh, aggregate content, store, the content and and make those uh, files or documents shareable and editable. There's, uh, mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's not as simple as uh, kind of <laughs> you make it sound. It sounds like there's <laughs> a lot that w- went into it um, to to you know focusing on the end user, mm-hmm. right? So so they like you said, um, everything they look at looks the same, so they don't have to worry about it. if I look at the state of Tennessee and the state of Colorado. I want to have the same uh, look and feel, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, of these pages rather than you know what they were originally, how they were originally you know written. <laughs> so. Exactly, exactly. So yeah, no, it's a, uh, uh, it's been a, a a lot of work going into the platform. Uh, we've but we've tried to make it, you know, f- from a user experience as as clean and as simple as possible. A nice big map on the front to you know to help people understand. Kind of what's legal, where, um, you know, be able to drill in. But yeah, the, uh, the, the back end is a, is a piece of work, um, that, you know, that my co founder and CTO, uh, Mark Spiegel, he's, you know, that's, that's his, that's his baby. And, um, you know, I just keep throwing new ideas. He figures out how to get them built and how to organize it all. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Um, now, now besides, um, compliance within um i guess uh the sports betting industry do you kind of branch out into let's say um any leagues or um uh, even teams whether it's college or or, or professional is there like opportunity for you there yeah definitely uh i mean the the leagues and folks need access to and need to understand all those regulations um as well probably obviously not at the level of detail that operators um and you know b2b suppliers have to but there there's licensing implications there's uh data implications there um so and marketing as well so so they certainly need to understand um you know what's in those regulations as well and then from from the consulting side yeah we we beyond um, operators, suppliers, and marketing affiliates. We, we work with, um, some, some leagues to help them get their games and events approved for wagering, um, in various states, uh, working them build, you know, policies and procedures to, uh, make sure that they're doing everything they need to be doing to, um, avoid, um, you know, uh, issues and scandals happening in, in their events. Um, yeah, so, so definitely, Doing some work with with uh, some of the you know the the leagues and teams uh, more leagues um, on that aspect as well, and then there's 
um, you know, ancillary businesses uh, around the, the the industry as well. And, and we've all, we also um, <clears throat> have some some cannabis clients, and that um, you know, there's there, there's a lot of crossover in terms of regulatory frameworks, um, and we have some. Uh, some cannabis specialists as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very interesting. Oh, well, yeah, the same kind of <laughs> interesting market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As we see the states go live with cannabis, yeah. so you know, again, going back to kind of Russell's point on the technology, it is so important. You know, in, in building this this platform, you know, uh, when I looked at it, and you talk about real time, you know, what it, what is that? You, how does technology play into really building a real time platform in this in this marketplace where everything is changing? You know, especially you know cannabis, sports betting, state by state. You know, how is Mark kind of keeping up with all that? What's the technology that's really driving that? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, you know, it's more about part of it's about data organization and understanding the pieces of data we need to what we need to to provide a, a product. To the clients, and then understanding how we, um, how we you know pull that data, how we keep that data up to date. So we use some uh, some proprietary kind of technology to, to to do that. We also, I mean, we also have um, a search function on on our on our platform that we're still testing out. That's in in, in beta format, but allows people to kind of do um, Google like uh, natural language questioning. Searches across multiple okay. states, understand regulation. Um, so there is the you know artificial intelligence uh, piece right. of that. Um, you know, there's there's you know multiple databases we're plugging into. There's you know websites that we're crawling and 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 how our you know uh, um, how our crawler kind of is constantly checking for for updates on on data as well. So you know different pieces coming from from all over. Um, all come together to to kind of produce the playbook. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like uh, you know, there's a you know pretty broad set of uh, features, right? And uh, um, and, and uh, components necessary to make this happen. So, mm-hmm. yeah, excellent. Um, so you know, we we've talked about kind of a little bit of the past, a little of the current. Um, what do you see like in the next several years? Kind of both uh domestically mm-hmm. and internationally specifically like around um com- compliance um uh what do you what do you see in the next few years going yeah i mean i think you'll see in terms of like regulation you'll see more states coming on board obviously california's got a big ballot initiative this year uh the texas legislature is out this year but they'll be back next year and uh a lot of people are are, are thinking that there'll be a passage, um, you know, potentially passage next year in Texas. Um, you know, so, so I think you'll see sports betting continue the, the, the growth that's occurred. Um, you know, I think eye gaming will be interesting to watch from a regulatory perspective because, uh, you know, depending on if there's, uh, an economic downturn and states need, uh, to be looking for some additional revenue, eye gaming is an obvious, uh, an easy tax win for them. They're, um, you know, they're already got a lot of them already have mobile sports betting. So, you know, adding high casino, um, could be a, a very big pickup from tax revenue perspective. So I think some states will get, um, will start seeing that trend happen. Probably not as fast as we've seen sports, but, um, you know, certainly more states will come on board from, from my gaming, um, and then from a from a compliance perspective, I think you'll see regulators um, kind of take a step back, look at their um, you know look at their reg- regulations, look at what other states have done that have come on board since, and maybe have like a you know a round two of improvements. Um, I think you'll see some more uh, focus on advertising, focus on responsible gaming. Uh, there's been a good amount already, but I think that. Um, you know, there'll be a fresh round there. I don't know that we'll ever get to uh, a point of, you know, that, that you see in, in, in some European countries right now, uh, with, you know, small betting limits or, um, you know, marketing restrictions on, 
on on shirts and all that. But um, you know, I think there's there's some level of of uh, enhanced or further regulation that we'll see in in, in the next couple of years for sure. Yeah. And, and as you work with with uh, more states or, or newer states that are coming online, do you see the regulation being uh, more simplistic or it's uh, as complex as ever? <laughs> yeah, no, I, th I think each state state has its own uh, you know process, and um, you know there there are some states that have come on board that have made it very uh, simple, and others that have you know. Uh, not intentionally made it more difficult, but like that's just the process they've used in in land based or you know like in, in trying to fit within their with their current regulatory structures and processes. Um, you know, it just leads to a heavier regulatory burden for the operators. But I think um, you know operators have have seen some significant burdens uh, to date. Um, and understand you know the importance of it understand the need for it and, and are willing to you know work with um within the within you know the boundaries the regulators set yeah. yeah how important is is the audit function uh, of what you're doing because it seems yeah. like as we're talking about regulations as we're talking about compliance the next chapter and the quickest chapter that everyone's dealing with now is all these taxes, right? Is that a big area where you're focused on down the road and part of, you know, part of a new platform or part of this platform? Sure. Yeah, it's a good question. Uh, and actually it's, it's something uh, that, you know, I think we will see more of, uh, you know, from, from a, from a financial audit perspective, not our right. focus, um, right. you know, we're not CPAs or not, but right. uh, we, we, what I do think is going to happen from the audit perspective is, is you'll see, uh, and some states already require it. Indiana requires it biannually or, or semi-annually. Uh, Arizona requires it annually where uh, you do a regulatory audit. So, um, you know, the, the, the operator is responsible for, for conducting, um, you know, regulatory audit, ensure that they're meeting um, their regulatory obligations. And, and that's, a you know, certainly a big chunk of, of some of the work we do. We have um, auditor... Um, banking auditors on staff that have you know learned and and become gaming uh experts to to uh you know take on that responsibility on behalf of um, some of our clients and, and and i think you'll see more states kind of look at that process and 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 say you know what that that's actually a you know something good we should be implementing um, right and also it's you know we've also had clients who on their own Without a regulatory requirement, have just said, "Hey, we think um, you know, we think we should have a look at our operations in this state. Can you audit audit the entirety of the operations on our behalf?" And so uh, we've taken that on from a consulting perspective. And Kevin, your point, yeah, we're always thinking about our right, how do we how do we, this is obviously all tied to regulation. How do we tie this back to uh, playbook? How do we tie this back to the work right. uh, from right. a tech perspective? Um, you know, so. That's definitely another technology challenge down the road. Exactly. Well, I'm sure Mark is working on it somewhere <laughs> in a back room. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, that's why he's not here. Yeah. He's locked yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> at the next chapter, we'll see what exactly. he unveils. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, uh, you know, I think this has been great. Uh, this is know, great. Definitely uh, you know, eye opening for me, like, you know, everything that goes, that goes into, you know, what you do and as, you know, specifically into, into your platform. And again, I think we, we might have made it sound at, at certain points that it's much simpler than it is. But, you know, for folks who uh, understand, you know, technology, they'll appreciate, you know, mm -hmm. everything that, that's being done under the hood to kind of d deliver that, um, you know, friendly or user friendly mm -hmm. experience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's excellent. I appreciate, appreciate the opportunity and, and, and definitely yes. uh, we'd love to come back once we've uh, got a couple uh, more products down the line and, and uh, walk you through those. So we really appreciate the discussion. Thank you. Yeah, this yeah, is great. Yeah. I look forward to to seeing what in the future, especially especially as more states like Massachusetts come mm -hmm. on board, which I'm sure will make your life uh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Uh, well, okay, Eric. Thanks a lot for right. your time today. We appreciate, appreciate it. it. Thank you. Thanks. Yep. See we'll you talk soon. soon. Yep. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye.